Captain John White uh, served in the uh, U.S. Uh, Marine Corps in Vietnam as a Silver Star winner and a Purple Heart recipient as well. So please welcome Captain John White. John White, Captain, United States Marine Corps, 095151. Name, rank, serial number. First of all, what I want to say is uh, congratulations um, and uh, a sincere compliment to the Victor High School and Senator Rich Funky for hosting this event. Um, in these days and in these times, and there's a lot of controversy about military service and our engagements across the globe, uh, it is refreshing and it is heartwarming um, to know that this school district uh, is supporting this event uh, and honoring the service uh, and the sacrifice of all of those uh, who keep our freedoms uh, alive and well for us today. Um, a little bit about me, myself. Uh, in high school, uh, in graduating high school, uh, my intention was to immediately in, in, in join the Army. And I had a guidance counselor that uh, said, you know what, um, if you want to go into the military service, that's fine, but maybe you ought to stay in school, um, apply to college, and um, uh, go that route, and then decide what you want to do from there. Uh, which is what I did. And so uh, given that great advice from a guidance counselor, uh, I went to college, finished that off, and uh, my intention and my whole career plan uh, was to become a Navy flight officer. And uh, I went through all the battery of tests and passed all of those and did very, very well. And um, I was on my way to Pensacola, I thought, uh, to become a, a Navy pilot. And I had one final physical that I had to take at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base down in uh, uh, Dayton, Ohio. And I flunked the hearing test. And so I washed out uh, from that standpoint. I had to quickly make up my mind. And so I took a job, administrative job, working for the Federal Reserve out of New York City. Uh, wasn't my intent. Wasn't what I wanted to do. I'd always had military in my mind. And uh, I lasted in that job a, a, a thriving nine months uh, before I decided that uh, I was not an administrative bank examiner. Um, I, uh, Vietnam was raging. And uh, that was my call. And that was my call to duty. I enlisted in the United States Marine Corps in December of 1965. I went to um, basic training in Quantico, Virginia. Uh, and then in the Marine Corps, we, we call it the basic school. It's kind, of, it's kind of confusing, but you go through basic training, and then every Marine officer goes through the basic school, which is a six months advanced infantry training. After six months of that, and there were 363 of us in our class, we all graduated second lieutenants, out of 363 of us, in October of 1966, 322 of us went immediately to Vietnam. That was the major point of engagement, and quite frankly, from the standpoint of the pride and the honor of being a United States Marine, that was the place to be. I was there, I was actually in country for four months, got shot up pretty bad during a uh, uh, operation, a major operation against the North Vietnamese regulars. And uh, from there, spent the next 14 months in various naval hospitals. So Captain Jeff Bartoski in the United States Navy, great kudos to you and your services, because all of the medical services for the Marine Corps are provided by the Navy. When I came out of that, uh, the hospital environment, I was on limited duty. And so what they had me do, which actually changed the course of my entire career, is they actually had me um, in front of congressional funding committees where I would, I would narrate, I would actually instruct and narrate this fake war that was going on behind me. And so we would talk about integrated weapon systems, where we had armor and we had infantry and we had air and we had uh, you know, all kinds of uh, uh, war fighting technique involved in this demonstrated war that we had behind me. And I was demonstrating and I was narrating that so that we could get funding, the Marine Corps could get funding for the weapons uh, and the weaponry that was needed to conduct those uh, those those was warfare. So that was an instructional duty for me. Uh, that's where I learned to teach, and uh, that's where uh, I kind of got a passion for, um, I don't know, the, uh, the whole presentment of, of what we're doing here and why we're doing it. After that, after I came off limited duty, I went to Guantanamo Bay. And, uh, you know, Guantanamo Bay is famous now from the standpoint of, uh, you know, uh, it, it's all... Um, jail uh, issue here for the terrorists, but uh, Guantanamo Bay in that time was a uh, U.S. naval base. I was the deputy commander for the leeward, uh, which means, uh, you know, the non-windward side of the island, 
And uh, it was kind of interesting in Guant Guantanamo Bay, and we don't realize it, but the Cuban refugees were coming across the mud flats trying to get into America because that naval base was America. And the Cuban refugees were coming across a couple hundred yards of mud flats every night trying to get into the U.S. naval base and then back into the United States. All declassified now, highly classified at the time, but we were taking gunfire every single night. And it was interesting because the Cubans weren't shooting at us, they were shooting, they were trying to kill the Cubans that were trying to leave the country. Pretty sad, pretty pathetic, um, and in a very dangerous environment from the standpoint of the naval base down there. Um, but uh, our major mission at that point was duck and take cover. They're not really firing at us. But uh, it was a very, very interesting time. And as soon as the Cubans who did, the families and, and children um, and mothers and fathers who did make it, what we'd say, across the wire, uh, they were immediately interrogated by the CIA. We had a whole uh, you know, retention camp there and then immediately shipped off to, uh, to Miami and flown into Miami um, to uh, you know, become welcomed in the United States. Following when I got out of the Marine Corps, um, I then took this whole experience that I had and learned in terms of presenting these uh, um, uh, armament uh, uh, discussions here with the Senate uh, and the Congressional Funding Committees, and I joined a training company. And I spent my career as a management trainer, if you will, uh, joined an organization that uh, worldwide uh, provided management training and leadership and uh, technical skills and some uh, issues around project management, sales, negotiating, and things of that nature. But I spent my whole career at that point uh, in the training and the, uh, in the teaching, adult education teaching business. And so the Marine Corps really gave me the foundation for the rest of my life in terms of my career. I think my, my final point is community service. One of the things that I think you'll find every veteran, and certainly the, these, these high caliber veterans that you see on the stage here today, is when you do come out of the military, there's a sense of pride and there's a sense of commitment to your community uh, that I think is greater than just naturally occurs to people. And you'll find a greater level of community involvement and commitment for time and effort and money from veterans than I think you find anywhere else. I serve on a committee that is currently constructing a Gold Star Memorial. Uh, the Gold Star Memorial, if you're not familiar, a Gold Star family is a family who have lost a loved one in combat. We're building a memorial, a monument, at the Whitehaven Cemetery uh, up in Pittsford. And the interesting part about engaging with those families who have lost a son or a daughter in combat is the incredible level of commitment that they have to the community, their patriotism, their love for this country, and you'd think at a time when they've lost a loved one and they may have an awful lot of bad feeling about the military, these folks are so passionate about the United States of America, all of the opportunities, and all of the effort and the uh, energy that they can put into building a better community. I would suggest that each one of you stay in school. If you're confused at the end of high school in terms of what you want to do or where you want to go, then my suggestion is join the military. It is a wonderful opportunity to develop a core set of values that will serve you well for the rest of your life. You will learn honor. You will learn courage. You will learn commitment. And you can translate those into everything that you do for the rest of your life. And the benefits that you may have when you get out of the service in terms of continuing your education, uh, be it a master's degree, be it a uh, baccalaureate degree, whatever it happens to be, those opportunities are well served. So I commend you to the fact, and I repeat the issue, um, you don't join the military because you got nothing else to do. You join the military because it's honor, it's courage, and it's commitment. Thank you.